Okay, welcome to Black to Black Talk Show. I have Omu here with me today to, on the show. Could you, uh, welcome to the show. Could you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Omu Obilo. I am an executive coach, a speaker, and a trainer. I live in Lagos, Nigeria, and I work globally. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I was, I brought you on to talk about your business. Give us a little insight on your business and how you live your bodacious dream with the radical faith. So. Tell us what you actually do. Uh, what is your why for doing your business? What, what? What is your why? Hmm, that's a good one. So my why is, if I put it in one sentence, my why is I don't want people to go through what I went through. So I wish I knew, a, I wish I came in contact with a me. At, at an earlier stage in my life. Um, I probably did, but I wasn't aware enough to know what to do with the relationship. So I don't think, and I don't think anyone has to make the mistake if, if they are opportune not to. It's not, a, it's not a road anyone wants to go through. And in life, I find that if there's a way to, if there's a shorter distance, to your destination why not yes yes i agree so yeah if you can hire somebody like you to uh, help them along the way it'll make life much easier <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely. yeah uh absolutely. so uh you're a transformational coach so in your process of being a transformation transformation transformational coach what are some of the skills and steps that you teach people that you uh you coach Okay, so let me let me take it back a little. How did I, I, I started my coaching journey with the John Maxwell team in 2011. I joined as a founding member. Mm -hmm. And I'm always quick to say that at the time I joined, I was not thinking of becoming a speaker, trainer, or a coach. I was just wanting to, it was in my quest to develop myself. Mm -hmm. And when, I realized, oh, you could be a speaker, you could be a trainer, you could be a coach. I was like, hell no, I need to coach myself first. I, I mean, I have nothing to do with anybody. I'm still working on myself. As time went on, I found out that I was doing it informally, maybe at church with young people, but I never, I always shied away from um giving myself that title or that name or owning it. Now, if you notice, this is a journey a lot of people go through. So they have this talent and for different reasons, they don't want to rise to the um, occasion. They don't want to come out there for different reasons, fear of failure, fear of success, imposter syndrome, for different reasons. And they just go on sabotaging themselves all through life. Now, this was me. I didn't know that bit then. All I knew in my head then, I just needed to learn more. And so that saw me getting other certifications in emotional intelligence, in lifestyle and wellness. Um, and then I joined BNI to help me network. And so I started training on networking. What that has done for me now is that I'm able to put all these resources together to help create the transformations. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, so you said you, uh, you're a trainer for uh, John Maxwell. So how did you, that's, how did you start that? You just went to a train, uh, one of his sessions and then became a, a trainer or, or did you seek to become a trainer? You said you didn't, right? No, I, in, in 2011, when they started, they want, that was when they started the John Maxwell team and you get on the team and they um, teach you the John Maxwell method of coaching, of speaking and of training. And I mean, 20, um, 2011, we're talking about 12 years ago. So there was no Zoom. Mm -hmm. There was hardly any Skype. So we used to do the conference call. And of course the internet was yeah. barely there. Yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't as seamless. 
maybe if it was, maybe the connection would have been seeing the trainers and making that you know connection would have um, spurred me or encouraged me more. But this was all listening, you know, yeah. like an online. Okay. So we had the conference and we had the trainings and um, they taught us how to do masterminds. They taught us how to coach people. But no matter what they said at the time, it wasn't registering in my brain because I didn't think I was good enough to coach anyone. It, so all the content was for me to help me. That yeah. was the way that I saw it then. So at the time I started coaching people and speaking to people, it actually just came unconsciously. And then when I started owning it and I had done other trainings, I started putting everything together. And even up until date, there's sometimes I'm called to speak or, or I'm called on a talk show and I don't prepare and it's impromptu. And I'm asked certain questions and I just answer. And then I start asking myself, where did you get that from? And I yeah. found out, listen, listening to this, I'm practicing it for years and you think it hasn't <laughs> stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you also, uh, you're a speaker and you're also an author, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, you Do you have your own book or you, are you co-author or what? I co-authored. I'm working on my own book. Your own book. Okay. That's what I've done to a co-author. I'm working on my own book as well. Uh, so uh, do you uh, have any advice for people that's searching or looking for a coach? If they was seeking you out, what kind of clients do you uh, you look for or uh, they should be looking for when they're looking for a coach? So um, if you're ready to, ex to work on living your authentic life, I'm very big on authenticity. And um, I say this because it's a journey that I have been through and it's always easier for me to coach people from experience. And which is one of the reasons why I honed in my skills on transformation. And I try to practice the tools that I give my clients to practice as well so that I have been through it and it's easy for me. Um, so if you're ready to live your authentic life, and I say that because a lot of us, we think we know, but we don't know. And um, we think we're living our authentic lives, but a lot of times we're not. And it's a journey, it's not a destination. So it's a constant, it's work in progress. Um, uh, if, if there's, if there's not one without the other, you can't um, to go on a personal development journey and it doesn't affect your professional development. You can't go on a professional development journey and it doesn't affect your personal development. So the sort of people that I want, I work with, or people that should come to me are people who are looking to understand themselves better with a view to living their best lives authentically. And best lives also um, doesn't necessarily mean traveling and buying clothes, because <laughs> I struggled with that for a long time when I used to um, write living my best life. And I had people say, oh, you're enjoying yourself, you're traveling. And I said, living my best life doesn't mean I don't wake up and have bad days. It doesn't mean that I get everything that I want. It doesn't mean that I'm traveling here and there as much as I like traveling. It just means that I know who I am. I know what I'm dealing with. I'm able to control my outcomes. I'm more conscious about what's going in inside of me and what's going out of me and the way that I process things. So. Okay. So do you have any uh, upcoming events or any uh, that you're uh, hosting or you're a part of like speaking at? Um, there are a few um, speaking engagements that um, I'm on from um, August and October. That's actually in America. Mm -hmm. um, but come sep come when you come September, I'm starting a monthly by twice a month. So twice a month is by month 
five months with you, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So twice a month, <laughs> confused. So bad twice wiggle, a month, yeah. I'm starting. It's a bad week. So yeah. twice a month. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting um, twice a month. I'm starting a, a mentorship group where we meet online and it's f- totally free. And um, we have trainings it's for one hour. We have trainings. We do um, instant coaching for anyone who's available, like a group coaching thing. We do um, accountability. What we're going to, it doesn't follow any particular pattern, but every other week, you would live with a lot of resources. I'll share any of my resources with you and just pour out myself to anyone who's online. Okay. So how do they get in touch with you if they wanted to be part of that? Oh, awesome. If they DM me on Facebook or they send me an email uh, um, at omu, uh, um, omu at omu.live, um, the Google form for it will be out shortly. I can send it to you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. Okay. Uh, and I think something about you was uh, in part of a network. Uh, L is the L set F something new that you're doing? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yes, that's um in Lagos, Nigeria. So the state that I live in, and that happens to be, it used to be the capital of Nigeria for a very long time, and it's more or less like the commercial capital in quotes because it's still the bubbly and all the companies are here, um, and that's Lagos State. So the Gulf, the 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 state government um, has an employment trust fund and um, it's amazing. I didn't think that, I didn't think it was so good until I got involved with it. It's much better than I thought where they work with youths between the ages of 18 and 35 and they empower them, not just um, financially, they do a lot of training um, in different areas, soft skills, um, entrepreneurship and the good thing is that they follow up with them they mentor them it's like a little community where they really I'm, I'm really impressed and I'm really proud to be part of it so I'm working with them um, on mentoring and taking some of the programs with the youths yes okay it sounds great uh, I've seen uh, also you have a trip coming up uh, like my uh, uh, for Africa, yes. like yeah. yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That the anyone who wants to go on that one is going to be exciting. It's a ten day um, retreat immersion trip to um, Kenya, and we're going to different parts of Kenya. We're going to the Masai Mara. We're going to the area that has the beaches. We're going to um, see the five the five big um, animals in the desert. Uh, sorry, not the desert, in the, what's it called, reserve. Yeah, uh-huh. We're going to see, yeah, we're going to see the five big animals. It's a lot. There's actually, there are actually two packages. So you can decide to stay in the luxury hotel. We're, we're spending about two nights or three nights in Nairobi, which is the capital, um, when you come in and when you're leaving. And you have an option to either stay in a hotel or stay in a host home. And the host home has been um, profiled. You get to meet them online even before you get there. And this is for people who really want to immerse themselves in the culture. So they stay in the host home, they eat the local food, and they just generally experience what it's like to be Kenyan. Uh So it's an amazing one. Maybe okay. Yeah. How do people find out about that trip? Is it is it something that anybody can come to, or it's just or the part? Oh yes. If they send me a DM. I will uh, um give them um a, I will fix a meeting with them and have a conversation. Yes. Okay. Is there a deadline for that? Um, July, the last week in July. The last week in July. Okay. Uh. So tell us a little bit about uh, the things that motivates you. Like what, what is one of your bodacious dreams and with radical faith? That's my, my theme for my uh, show. But I know everybody has a bodacious dream because to even get started, you have to have a big dream to even take the leap of faith to even do your business. So tell us a little bit about that. 
So, you know, um, every day is a bodacious day for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then, you know, um, before I went into coaching, and I say this, uh, I'm a strong Christian, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Before I started coaching, I ran an event planning company. I, I don't know if I've said this in an interview before, but I remember praying to God and saying to God, um, I don't want an event every week because I want to have enough time to enjoy myself yeah. and enjoy what money it is I have made. And that I don't want to have events in Nigeria, that I wanted to be in Nigeria and have events and be called to have events anywhere in the world. And I'm talking about almost 20 years ago, there were, there were destination events, but it wasn't um, that big. Mm -hmm. So, but I just knew it was what I wanted. And I set out, I joined, um, I joined an association called Association of Bridal Consultants. And that opened, exposed me to the international community. I became a sandals and beaches specialist. And even before this whole online things, I could, with the sandals and beaches, I could sit on my bed and plan an event in sandals and in any of the resorts without necessarily meeting the people. And I enjoyed every minute of it. At some point with social media and all that, I started feeling the pressure to do events locally or do more events locally. And I got distracted. Now, when I started my coaching business, it was the same thing. I love speaking and I love speaking internationally. I, I like to combine the things I like. So I like traveling. So instead of just buying tickets, I can't, I mean, it, I, I, I can afford it, but I, it, I would rather not just spend money like that. I might as well combine everything. Yes. So <laughs> if you're called to speak in any part of the world, it's an opportunity to visit and Everyone used to just wonder that you're here. I mean, you haven't gotten enough speaking engagements. Here. Who is going to pay you to travel and all that? And I'm like, well, I see people do it and they don't have two heads. Um, I now remembered that when I was praying, when my um, I was more of moving from event planning to coaching and all that, and I was asking God where I went wrong, he said, you asked me for something. And while I was doing it, without seeking my opinion, you decided you didn't want it anymore and you. So I left you to do it, you know, and yeah. that just hits me. So even with my coaching and speaking journey, and I said I was going to speak on platforms across the world, um, every time the thoughts came and I'm like, no, this is what I have settled with God and I'll trust the process and work that journey and in in two years um thank god for the virtual space i've been on a lot of virtual platforms i've been a lot, on a lot of physical platforms i now have my tv show on expandi which is um global as well and is the first um personal development channel so i know that god is actually working out <laughs> working it out exactly yeah. uh, yes it's really bodacious for me to sit here and believe and know that i'll be sitting here and they'll be calling me one day to the caribbeans or to wherever to come and speak yes that's wonderful yeah it's uh, the many opportunities we have now to do virtual and uh because before i would have never thought i'll be on a, a talk show but this gave me opportunity to do it uh in a way that I would have never thought I could have before. So I understand and then able to speak because I my first stage was virtual. So yeah, I I uh I loved I love this way of uh, speaking, but I also want to do in person as well. But I kind of like this because I'm I'm an introvert. <laughs> if you would if you I, could I, not believe I am, as, I am as well, but that's another very bodacious move. I have accepted I'm an introvert, but I've also accepted that I'm not going to be um, limited. I'm not, 
I'm not going to be limited by it and I'm not going to let it overtake my dreams. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's the key. Uh, so if you had uh, any advice for someone like uh, that had a bodacious dream and was scared to go out and live it, what kind of advice would you give them? So, um, you know, I always use myself as an example. In the past, when I, I spoke to a few people concerning my dreams or what I wanted to do, and they say, oh, go to God, I'm always like, oh, please, can you sound real? I want a yes or no answer. Why would you tell me to go to God? Yeah. But what I know now, I what the easy way for me that I found out is when I have a dream, I try to look for a scripture to tie it to. Mm-hmm. Because even when you even when you have the dream and you're sure and you're bold and you're going for it, there are days that you're unsure. So when you're not even when you're you have the dream and you're you're not confident enough to go for it, that's even worse. So I look for those words, I call them my reference points, mm-hmm. and I hold up to them. Um, and use them to start to build my confidence to take that bold step. Then another thing that I have found that has worked for me is having a mentor and a coach. So in the past, I used to, I was okay with having a coach, but I just wasn't okay with having a mentor. In, my, in fact, when people ask me, who is your mentor? I say, I'm my, I'm my mentor. Yeah. I, I, could, I, mean, I was like, I, I want to be like myself, you know? Yeah. And I thought it was okay not to want to be like anyone else until I started, you know, this journey. And I realized that nobody's saying, oh, go and be Tina. Mm -hmm. But then you know that there are certain things you want to do that Tina does better Mm -hmm. or Tina knows more of. So modeling it, like modeling that particular thing, like Tina, would help you go faster, but it doesn't mean you're you're trying to copy Tina or be Tina. Mm -hmm. It's just to encourage you. So it's important for you to seek out those mentors. And and I've also learned that you don't have to meet them um, personally. So there's some people that I consider my mentors and I've read their books. I mean, I've read about them so much that I might tell you what they have for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never met them. Yeah. And I've never met them. But I just admire them and I like that part. That would be my second one. The third one, and I consider the most important, is to have a conversation with yourself. When you've had that conversation with yourself and you know your why, you know what drives you, you know why you want to do it, then you're able to develop a burning desire to achieve it. And that supersedes everything else that you're thinking. So on the days that you think you're not good enough and you ask yourself, who said so? Why do I think so? You know, ask yourself those questions. Um, those, are the, those are the things that will guide you. Ultimately, get a coach yes 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 that's wonderful uh so uh on uh do you have anything that uh has uh pushed you like for as like to leave a generational wealth uh, uh legacy for do you have kids do you uh family yeah. i have my son who's going to be 24 next on Mm-hmm. Um, and my world. Yes. And I have several other children that I call my children, but they're not my biological children. Uh-huh. But they give me so much joy. I mean, I have a son who's 24, and I have children who are like six months and three months old. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yes, yeah. so I have a t- I, my my son just turned 24. Uh, this month on the 15th so I and I have just the one son as so uh and my nieces and nephews that's my other children (laughs) yeah yeah uh, yeah, so uh what what do you feel about uh uh, collaboration over competition because a lot of 
people that's in business that's doing the same things they have a problem with collaborating with other people that's doing the same thing they're doing but they don't see the bonus or the uh you know the things that they can learn from doing that I, I, I think in the past, people were a little uncomfortable with collaboration simply because they didn't really understand it and also that they didn't see the power in collaboration. Um, I strongly believe in collaboration. I mean, why not? Why do I want to do anything alone? Uh, yeah. <laughs> personally? Uh -huh. And also um, being in BNI um, and being a trainer in BNI has also opened my eyes to see the power in collaboration, to actually train on collaboration and networking. The, um, the only advice I'll give is when you're collaborating, make sure that your values align with the values of the person that you're collaborating with. And that way you have no issues whatsoever. Yeah, uh, I know you mentioned BNI. Can you explain a little bit about BNI? A lot of people don't know about that, but we have that here as well. So can you explain yeah. a little bit about that? So BNI is Business Network International and it's the largest um, referral network um, in over 79 countries now. I, yeah, over 79 countries. And um, so it's a networking meeting platform in it's, like I said, in some, something countries, I'm in, I'm in Nigeria. Uh -huh. uh, the good thing about it is, so when I say I want to go global, I want to go global, BNI played a major role, especially during the lockdown, because prior to the lockdown, you had your meetings in your various chapters yeah, yeah. and it was uh -huh. interesting. Yeah. We also had a platform where you could connect with every other member in anywhere in the world um, and you can the whole idea is to um, exchange referrals and collaborate. Yeah, so you uh -huh. see what you're doing, you say what you do, and you could do this in this platform. And then boom, the lockdown came and all yeah. the meetings were virtual. Yeah. So what that meant was that I could attend a meeting in China this, this evening, attend one in Japan in the morning, attend one in Houston, attend one I could attend meetings anywhere. Yeah. So it kind of just opened the whole um, world, okay. even it, it's smaller for BNI yeah. members. And so you're building relationships with people from some countries I'd never dreamt of visiting. I now yeah. want to visit. I have, you know, I have <laughs> someone who's my friend that I've met through BNI. And of course, there's a lot of collaboration going on. We started having coaches would have webinars together, we would have summits, we would have. So that actually um, was a good practice ground, good learning ground for me in terms of collaboration and networking. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's done. Because I have had people, you know, ask me about BNI, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I could never think of it at the time. I said, I cannot think of the name of it. And I'm thinking, cause I went to a couple of meetings, uh, then uh, something happened and I didn't actually get a chance to join, but I could never think of the name of it and how to get in contact with somebody to get, to get involved again. But they have a local chapel chapter uh, in uh, uh, Beaumont, Texas. So it's, I just have to get back involved again, but but every time I, I have to explain it, it's like, I can't get it right. I can't tell anybody how it goes. <laughs> you should, you should. And um, we have our conferences, Niger we have our national conference in Nigeria in October. In America, they had one in Miami in May, I think end of May, there's one going on in India. And then we have a global conference where everyone meets everyone. Um, it's such a such a fantastic gathering for building relationships and collaboration. It actually changed, totally transformed my networking skills. Yes, yes, yeah. So that's what I've learned, like through that. Uh, when I went to the meetings, I'm saying there was like one person was like the, I guess the person that everybody support that that month or whatever, or however they. I can't remember how they did it, but that was wonderful. I, that is a great way of doing business too, uh, to get 
passing business cards out, getting to know people. So I am a big uh, uh, advocate for uh, networking and collaborating. So uh, do you host any networking events of your own or, or anything like that? I, just... Only, I just host the BNI ones. I'm an executive director, so I, I host the BNI ones. BNI, okay. Uh, so uh, what are some of the books that you have written so far that that they can actually go look it up and purchase? Oh, the only one that I've written now is um, um, Fearless, um, Fearless, Bold and Fierce. Okay. Um, that's that's it. But the other, the other one will be coming out shortly. So, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you did one with Dr. K um, uh, uh, Kiever. I've said Dr. Kiever. Kiever. You did yeah. one with, yes, yes, yes. Cause you're in my, I did the magazine for her. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, 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 that hadn't, that book hadn't come out yet, right? Or had it came out? No, it's coming out shortly. It's coming out shortly, okay. Uh, so uh, do you have any closing remarks or anything you want to tell the uh, audience or? Anything you want to add? Yes, I just want to tell everyone to go out there and love themselves because um, no one can love you more than you love yourself. Yes, yes, that is uh, that is so true. Because uh, and there's only one you. I always tell people it's only one me, so it's always one you. So go live your best life <laughs> on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> on purpose. Yes, on purpose. Okay. I thank you for coming on the show and I hope you come back thank again. You. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome.